What's going on, Hot Take Hockey? It's me, Fitty Trent, and I have just witnessed our first ever overtime game between the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Washington Capitals. I don't know why it's like this, but I just feel like I'm getting the best games of the entire playoff race. I mean, you got to see a little bit of a depressed John today. Unfortunately, his Toronto Maple Leafs lost 5-1 to one against the Boston Bruins. But hey, you know, my team's not in the playoffs. I got nothing to lose, so I got to watch this great game between the Washington Capitals and the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I will be fair with you guys. I did not get to catch the entire game. I'm sorry. I was working. I came home, and there was about five minutes left in that first period. So I got to catch majority of the game. But when I came home, basically, I was looking, and I heard there were a lot of, like, penalties here and there, especially on Columbus's side. It looked like, you know, Washington was having a lot of power play opportunities. And, you know, basically, I turn on the TV, and I'm not even sitting down at this point, and then... Boom! Josh Anderson just comes over and flattens Michael Kepney. A hit from behind. Honestly, it looked like Michael Kepney was kind of turning. And next thing you know, he just got laid out. You know, Anderson, you're gone. You've been thrown out of the game. Game misconduct. Get in the box, son. In fact, don't get in the box. Get into the dressing room because you're done for the rest of the game. And they were just talking about how threatening the Washington Capitals can be on the power play. And just talking about Evgeny Kuznetsov and how many great plays that he makes. And what happens? Evgeny Kuznetsov, he's breaking in. He goes for a pass. And what does Bobrovsky do? He basically dives over, anticipating that pass, but it just squeaks in between his pads and ends up going into the net. That's right, TJ Oshi. He had the chance, you know, to tap it in, but nope, it just missed Oshi and just went in on a on um, Bobrovsky, however, and you know the goal. They decide they were going to challenge it for goaltender interference because Oshi he ran into Bobrovsky a little bit, but it wasn't enough. You know they end up calling it a good goal. And next thing you know, you know, Washington, they're like, Evgeny Kuznetsov, he got that good goal. Can't believe it. He comes down immediately right after that and shoots a beauty right off the post and in to make it two to nothing at that point. It was two to nothing for the Washington Capitals. And for me, honestly, it was just looking like the game's pretty much over at that point. I know it was just the end of the first period, but second period starts up. And before you can even blink, once again, Columbus, they are proving that they are still in the series and they are still threatening themselves because they get a goal from Alex Wenberg, assisted by Jenner and Vanek. And the next time, a Grubauer, he has to stop some good shots. And then Bobrovsky, honestly, I give Bobrovsky the nod as being the best goal time of this game. Made plenty of great odd man rush stops. One on Burakovsky, some point blank stays, I guess, Stefan and right at the point and then you know Columbus once again goes back to taking more penalties with Artemi Panarin getting a hooking call third period starts and Alex Wenberg gets absolutely flattened he gets sandwiched right in between Tom Wilson and Alexander Ovechkin we're not sure who's going to get the penalty but it ended up going to Tom Wilson getting that penalty and it was a very dangerous play you know, he definitely crossed the line there. And then Thomas Vanek, that's right, the ex-Vancouver Canuck, my ex-team, you know, my current team right there, ex-player, comes in with the power play goal in the clutch, assisted by Dubois and Panarin. The next thing you know, Nick Foligno, as a captain should, proves why he's that captain of the Columbus Blue Jackets, because there's a big point shot from Eurobeck from the point. And Foligno, he could just go down and block it with his body. But no, he blocks it with his face. He takes the full brunt of it on his face. He's bleeding. Next thing you know, they got to take him off. You know, he's skating all by himself. But that is enough to pump up the Columbus Blue Jackets at least a little bit. You know, to be fair, Washington, they came back immediately after. And the next play, and Devontae smith Pelly scored an amazing goal. You know, just right cross crease on a beautiful goal. But, you know, Columbus, they did things, and they did things white. They ended up getting underneath the skin of Evgeny Kuznetsov. And you saw him absolutely break down. He would start slashing people. He'd start, you know, trying to get after Panarin and things like that, after little hits after the whistle and things like that. They they did it. They cracked the Washington Capitals all the way to getting two back-to-back -back power plays where Seth Jones, the great defenseman, gets his first ever goal of the postseason, assisted by who else but Panarin and Cam Atkinson, and then going into overtime. I mean, everyone's looking at the players on the Columbus Blue Jackets. You look at, you know, Anderson, he's out of this game, might be getting to spend it after that great 
or that really risky hit on Michael Kempney. You look at Felino, who's still a little bit bloody after blocking that shot with his face. And who else to score the overtime goal but Artemi Panarin, assisted by Ian Cole and Dubois. Honestly, it was so much fun. It was so great. Yes, you know, during that overtime, Washington, they had their chances too. But overall, Columbus, they came out on top. And they proved to me that they are serious contenders. They have never won a playoff round in their entire careers. But this year, they have proved it to me, especially during this game. If they could keep on playing this way, it would be incredible. And I could see them being a really big contender contender for the game. Looking at the winners, in my opinion, number one winner for me, I could go with the easy one and say Panarin, but instead I got to go with my man, Ian Cole, the man who's won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, and who knows he might do it with the Columbus Blue Jackets this year because this guy was throwing the body around a lot, throwing around Lars Zeller, Kuznetsov. He was even throwing around Ovechkin at times, and he had a lot of great, great looks from that point on the net. And, of course, he ended up starting that play that ended up scoring that goal for our Tremie Panarin, giving the Columbus Blue Jackets that win. So I have to give Ian Cole my number one nod right there. Also, I have to give a nod to Boone Jenner. I mean, I know that he only had one assist during this game, but the passes that he was making today were absolutely unreal. They were incredible. Everything was on the tape. He was doing very, very well. And Vanek, I got to give a little bit of a nod to my him, myself, you know, strictly because he was an ex-Canuck. And also, he got an assist when he got off. His stick slapped out of his hand. In fact, that first play where the Columbus Blue Jackets scored, he got the stick knocked out of his hand. It ended up hitting his stick, and he got an assist for it. So Thomas Bannock, of course, doing the classic Canuck move, only getting points when you're not even in the play. So good for him. And, of course, Bobrovsky, I got to give my nod to him, playing absolutely outstanding. For the Washington Capitals, for two periods, Evgeny Kuznetsov looked like the absolutely best Washington capital on the ice, not just because of the two goals, but just because the way that he was leading the team, the way that he was leading the charge, he was making some hits, doing a lot of good shots, and more importantly, making perfect passing plays to players like Nick Backstrom, Alexander Ovechkin on the power play. Even Tom Wilson had a few good looks, thanks to Kuznetsov. So honestly, he was setting up very, very well. But my main star has to go to Devontae smith Pelly for this entire game. He was shooting the puck like no other he looked like he was wanting to score a goal absolutely incredible he did score a goal luckily on that cross crease yes he might have been a minus one because he was on the ice for two goals against but other than that on the offensive side of the puck he was very very smart Grubauer, honestly, he did not have to face a heck of a lot of shots. He only had 21 shots against him. None of them were absolutely outstanding saves that he had to make. So honestly, Grubauer, he didn't look outstanding to me. But then again, he didn't look bad either. So maybe they'll continue on with Grubauer. Maybe we'll actually get to see Holtby come back. For a player that played really poorly, in my opinion, for the Washington Capitals, Number one for me was Lars Eller. I mean, he was just getting thrown around out there. Yes, sure, he was still winning face-offs and things like that. But overall, he was just looking not not himself. He wasn't looking like that Lars Eller. He was looking like a very, very weak bottom six guy, looking like a very small guy getting tossed around by those big guys in Columbus. So honestly, Lars Eller, if you want to do better, I think they need that depth. We have a ton of comments right now. So I want to give a huge shout out to everyone in the comments, like Bodo, John, Von Hook, Packard. You know, Garrett Fleabers, you know, Vaughn Hook Packard say, what's up? What's going, going on, guys? Uh, Garrett Fleabers says, good. I hate Washington as much as I hate Pittsburgh. There you go. Garrett Fleabers is happy. Uh, Washington had their heads up their ass the whole game. A lot of dumbass plays. Says Bodo. I agree with that. I mean, as I said, Kuznetsov was probably the best one to make the plays in those first two periods. But during that third period, he just got the Columbus Blue Jackets underneath his skin. Uh, watch the Capitals get knocked out of the first round, says Packard. It could happen. It could absolutely happen. I mean, the Capitals have won the past two President's Trophies last year, and they never made it past the second round, so who knows? Garrett Fleeper says Philadelphia and Toronto are both getting smacked around. You know, Toronto, they did have that big loss tonight. Definitely go check out that recap. Um, listen to this, you would have thought that the Caps won, says the funds, but they didn't. Yep, it's very true. Capitals and Penguins have first-round exits. Watch, says Garrett Fleepers. Wouldn't that be ironic? What's going on with the Preds, says, Pack, says uh, Packard. From my knowledge, I think it's 2-1 to one right now. Uh, we will not do a recap of that game, unfortunately, because, unfortunately, some of us could not do all recaps. But we will be doing most of the recaps. 0-0, zero, zero, says Von Hook. We will be doing that recap later on tonight. So be sure to check out Anaheim versus, you know, the Anaheim, Anaheim versus the Anaheim Ducks. No, Anaheim versus San Jose. Um, Lee took six penalties, says John. He's still a little bit salty. Uh, Sam Gagne says, my former team is clutch. Absolutely there, Sam Gagne. 
Bodo says it's hard to three-peat. Absolutely. Sharks for the cup. Uh, he'll want them to win the cup just because of his bracket picks. Honestly, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this. I mean, this has been, you know, pretty much a standard recap. But upcoming, if you do not know already, the Tampa Bay Lightning just beat the New Jersey Devils. There's a lot of storylines. And Austin, the man in charge, he will be doing his second ever solo recap all by himself. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And be sure to show him a lot of love because he is just starting out, guys. You know, he is the starting out of all the broadcasters. So be sure to definitely check that out as immediately once this game ends. Be sure after you watch that live recap, you go on and watch the Boston Bruins versus Toronto Maple Leafs recap. Even though John's Toronto Maple Leafs lost, I guarantee you he gave his best takes on it. And after all of that, be sure to stick around later tonight if you can. And if it's not too late for you, for San Jose versus Anaheim Ducks, that recap will be done by me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this because we are just getting started and the playoffs are getting bigger and better. Anyway, guys, peace out.